Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Monday, Monday, Monday. What's up, everybody? It's the Monday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkers, and hope you guys all had an amazing weekend. We are going to kick off what we do each and every day, looking at our futures markets uh, 10 to 12 of them to identify both breakouts and reversal trades from an educational perspective. Let's go ahead and dive in. You know, this morning, the S&P is down about seven points. The Nasdaq's down about 15. Uh, crude oil is up just a smidge and gold is down a little bit. So a little bit of a of a backwards play on what has been a pretty normal correlation. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a pretty normal co- correlation that when the S&P is down, that the gold is up. So uh, slightly off of our normal uh, correlations that we've had for the past few weeks. And let's see what that means for today. Uh, real quick uh, real quick announcement. We are doing a free preview week, October 20th to the 25th. So that's going to get you access to our live trade rooms. I think we've got three of them that week, uh, both options and futures trading. It's going to gain you access to the open forum session so you can share ideas, ask questions, speak to uh, speak to the instructors, uh, access to the trade feed updates and the trade worksheet, and then uh, an options deconstruction lesson session. So go to tradersarmy.com, sign up for a free membership, and you'll get the information on how to join us that week. So looking forward to having y'all join us and you get a little peek behind the curtain, see what's going on. All right, so let's find some levels. So uh, not a whole lot. We had a, we had a live trade room last night. Uh, not a whole lot of change from last night's live trade room. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we actually caught a little bit of a candle to candle short, uh, yesterday in the S and P, uh, off of this area here. And it moved down for a you know, a few points. If you, uh, if you were in this one, then you're, you're probably out right here and in right there. So you got, uh, you know, looks like about a point and a half or so for a, you know, a little, little bitty overnight play, but the market's not really doing a whole lot. Uh, not, not a lot of change from the overnight session. We had this little gap down area right here that could still act as a reversal point, um, but I don't. Uh, I just don't feel like there's a whole lot of great opportunity, and only because if you think about it, we're basing below the level, right? If you if you uh, consider this its own level. then I would need at least a two to one reward to risk ratio for that to make sense. Remember, I don't I don't rely strictly on three to one. I'm okay at a two to one. Um, and if that's our risk, then our reward would have to be at least twice this amount, which would put us down here. Well, unfortunately, I have basing that's inside of that two to one uh, of that two to one uh, measurement, and so that basing tells me that it doesn't. It may not make sense to try to short that thing, simply because the uh, the the shorting uh, doesn't give me the reward to risk ratio that I would look for in a high probability trade. And so what I'm going to say now is you've got some levels here and way out here. Uh, if we base in this region, it might be okay for a breakout to the upside. So what I'll do is I'll say if we base now remember we got to have the basing but if we base in front of here let's look for a breakout to the upside. Frankly, you could even consider a breakout to the downside below here uh, if you're so inclined. Um, but I th- but uh, you know the the upside breakout if we get some basing might even be a little bit of a better play. Nasdaq very much the same picture, not a whole lot to uh, to add to what we spoke of uh, on uh, on. Uh, last night's session for those of you that were there uh, and those of you that were not it was really just identifying this big parabolic move up now in both the S&P and the NASDAQ we had looked at a reversal off of this off of this level here last week and we did get a little bit of a move down off of that level but not enough to make it worthwhile and frankly it got to that area at the end of the day on a Friday which makes it tough to carry over so um, crude oil uh, in crude, we are trading up this morning in crude, so we do have a little bit of a wick over wick level here that I think could serve for a, for a potential reversal. A little bit concerned with this basing down here, but we are coming up into that region, so keep an eye on this 
53, call that 53.78 by 53.97 area up there for a potential reversal in crude. Although we're, we're forming a bit of a base. So, you know, you're, it's very close to, it's got to, you know, if I, if I do any more basing here, it's definitely going to be uh, a level that I pull off. So just keep an eye on that as well. Don't, don't, don't allow the basing to eat away at your profit objective. Uh, as, as uh, gold is continuing to kind of come down a little bit, uh, I think it's, uh, it's one that might be setting up for a breakdown below this region, provided that we get some basing in there. And then you can get a nice little bit of a move uh, from here down into here. This would be where our, our demand area is. So there's, there's a little play there from 1500 to 1495. You can maybe pick up five points. Can't have any, you know, any more than a two point risk to do that because you got to get at least a two to one reward to risk. Uh, in our bonds and currency markets, so starting with the ZN, which is our 10 year note, uh, we are in between our levels of demand and supply. There is a supply level up here which has a really good structural uh, build. Uh, it's, it's what I look for for a quality level. Uh, it's a little bit of basing below a pivot high. Stop and go above the pivot. However, it's against the big picture. The big picture is, is clearly an upward trending big picture, but our momentum is also waning. So because that level's so small, it might be worth a flyer, um, but I think there's a better demand level here, which is the origin of this move up. It's the speed candle retracement. In the Aussie, for those of you that were in the trade room last night, the Aussie uh, should have uh, ha is a trade you should probably still be in. Uh, the way we traded this was a gap and go trade. So you got short. We got short. Actually, uh, I think a couple of our of our members got short while we were in class, uh, and and the short is to get 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 short below the first candle's low with your stop above the first candle's high. So it moves down, uh, and now we've we really in the last uh, little bit got another strong move away. So for those of you that were in the room, you should be doing pretty well with that one, uh, as it's moved down uh, pretty handedly. So now I would take your stop and move it to. You know, maybe even above this big red candle, since you've uh, since you've gotten a nice little move out of there. If you were not in class and you're looking to say, okay, well, how can I take advantage of this next move? There's a little bit of demand here that we're coming into. I don't like the basing in front of the demand. Remember how basing will just be the kiss of death for a level, and so uh, this is a speed candle now that very well may be retraced. Uh, when I look at this on a four hour, I think that. Uh, you know, this could be our next leg down. So I'm going to convert our our uh, one hour level here to a confirmation sh uh, long. Now, the reason why we thought that this was about the, the, the peak is that this is a double bottom price pattern, right? Everybody can see hopefully that W that's formed right there. And on a double bottom price pattern, right, that would be the, the top of the, of the piece. It's a measured move, right? It's a measured move from the top to the bottom of the W. And if I take that and move it up, the market made that almost exact measured move before starting its leg down, which is why we were okay on the gap down to play the gap and go trade. Um, not because that you know that that's not what causes the market to fall. What causes the market to fall is the is the excess of supply. But if you have enough traders that are using the same things, then they're they're going to pile on. Those algorithms can allow price to keep moving. Uh, the the uh, the euro, we did get a little bit of basing here before the euro uh, moved down. We've come down out of it, and now we've kind of popped back up a little bit. So the euro breakdown is not quite as good as the uh, as the Aussie. Uh, and this is one we were looking at last night as, uh, you know, the uh, kind of the, I call this the Batman cowl setup. I was hoping for a potential breakdown below here. So if you weren't awake and you did not catch this breakdown, no problem. Um, I think you still may get another opportunity to break down somewhere around here. But it may not break out to the downside. I mean, this thing may just wind up meandering sideways a bit longer. You know, this supply level here worked out extremely well. Um, off of that uh, that little move, the next one's not until way up here. As far as demand goes, when I look at the four hour, you know that's a that's a really nice opportunity for a what I think is a potential rollover to go continue to head down. Although technically we're in an upward trend on the four hour, it's a very weakening upward trend because my momentum is slowing. I think the rollover is the next play. Canadian dollar, 
Um, we are below what could act as a breakout point here. We've got some supply up above us. Uh, and then I think that we could break down below this region as well. Uh, when I look at this on a four hour, you can see that we've got a parabolic move down and we're basically putting in now sideways price action. So I think it could break down from that, uh, from that level. Great British pound, Japanese yen. Uh, we are coming into the, the month of Brexit. So with Brexit happening uh, this month, we need to be aware of that. I looked up here for a potential breakout to the upside. We're going to need basing somewhere in this region. That would be somewhere in this region where I would need basing in order for this breakout to be uh, valid or effective um, because it's, you know, I can't get basing down here and be worthwhile. It's got to happen somewhere up in here, and then there's a potential for a breakout to the upside. And the Japanese yen, uh, our supply level worked out really well on Friday, uh, and so now we've got a little bit of a demand level down in here. So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing trading day. If there's anything I can do for you, please shoot us an email support at tradersarmy.com. Uh, don't forget to uh, to join us for the free preview week. I'll give you a couple more reminders up until then. But I uh, hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day.